Hi everyone, I'm Eija Karpelainen from CSC from Elixir Finland and I will be telling you about our experiences in tackling the need for scalable training and how to train non-coding scientists. So let's start with the scaling side of things. So as many of the previous speakers noted already, we need to provide more training. So we either need to provide more courses, which means that we need more trainers, or we need to provide courses for bigger audiences, which might require things like e-learning systems. So what does a person need in order to be a trainer? Well, obviously, first of all, content knowledge, uh, also time and pedagogical skills. So how can we help here? For the content knowledge, we can share training materials and we can allow observers, so budding trainers in our courses. Uh, we can save time by recording lectures, which means that we can then reuse them. And we can also run the courses uh, in shorter time because the participants can actually watch the lectures prior to the course. We can also share time, uh, sorry, save time by sharing training materials and using computing environments that are easy to set up. For the pedagogical skills, there are several efforts. For example, the Carpentries provide instructor training and also Elixir and Coplet provide train the trainer courses. The next one will be in May. So now let's talk about recording lectures. So this has several benefits. So you as a trainer uh, can reuse the video. You can also have more informed participants in your courses if they listen to your stuff beforehand. Now other trainers can benefit because they can learn from your lectures, also use them as a model and incorporate them in their own courses. And finally, the participants can get more out of a course if they can digest the theory in small doses beforehand by watching the video, and they can also use the videos for self-study. So we have been doing this for quite a while and learning things the hard way. So I would like to give a couple of tips. So first of all, it's a good idea to record in short sections because then it's easier to update. So rather than recording a one hour lecture, do like shorter topical sections, which are then easy to replace when something changes in the analysis pipeline. And also I would say that done is better than perfect here because this field moves so fast. So here you can see just an example. So this is our single cell RNA-seq data analysis course. And as you can see, the lectures are per topic. The videos are quite short. You can also see that it's far from perfect. So at the bottom there, for example, you can see that there is a video update in RPCA and reference-based integration. So obviously this topic should have been discussed in the integration video, but this came later, so it ended up being a separate video. So prior to the course, we provide the videos uh, to the participants like two weeks before, and they also get a set of questions so that they can test their knowledge. You can see the questions here. Now, how can we share training materials? So first of all, of course, your materials should be fair. I have added a link here to a very recently published FAIR training handbook and also an article about this. There are several portals where you can upload your stuff. For example, Elixir has the training portal test where you can have training materials and you can also build collections of training materials and in future you can construct training parts there as well, meaning courses that one should follow in a certain order. Um, here is also a link to a recent paper about this. And then finally, our single cell omics community is planning to have a training section on this website where we would collect a non-redundant and up-to-date list of training courses with links to the materials. So I mentioned e-learning. We have experimented with this a little bit. We made a single cell RNA-seq data analysis e-learning course. Uh, which has lecture videos, exercises, quizzes that the system automatically checks uh, the answers. Uh, there are a couple of forum questions and then the participants need to analyze their own data and write like a final report, which we then check. 
So in our experience, the most of the participants actually completed all these tasks. We also got good feedback, but still we see that people prefer to come to, so to say, real courses rather than do the e-learning one because they want to discuss with the trainer. Um, also, we have noticed that the downside, that, well, there are some downsides to this system. One is maintenance burden because uh, the single cell and spatial field is moving so fast. So every time something changes, we need to update the slides, the lectures, the exercises, and now also this e-learning material. The other thing is that the quizzes that I mentioned are actually hard to formulate in such a way that they would test deeper understanding because we cannot put open-ended questions there because they are, the answers are automatically checked. But now let's move on to how to provide training in this field to non-coding uh, scientists. So this is challenging for several reasons. For example, people with medical background might not have R or Python uh, coding skills. So using a graphical user interface like Chipster in our case or, or Galaxy in the exercises, certainly makes things easier and allows both us as trainers and the participants to focus more on the actual analysis concepts and pitfalls rather than just running ready-made code. Also what we have seen is that when people get hang of things they have this feeling that hey I can analyze my data it's very empowering and they might then continue to learn R or Python. The other problem in this field is that the analysis methods are quite complex. So if I compare, for example, to bulk RNA-seq data analysis, which I was uh, teaching a lot earlier. So here what we have done is that uh, we, we, we give the theory to people in small doses by giving them the lectures, the lecture videos in advance so they can watch them at their own pace. And also we have experimented with having shorter course days over a long period of time. Now this is a challenge for us because our participants come from all over the country. So we cannot possibly ask them to stay in Helsinki for, for a long period of time. But we have used online courses now also after pandemic. And according to our survey, people actually seem to prefer that. They prefer it for several reasons. Uh, it saves them time. It's easier because people have families and duties in the lab. It's also environmentally friendlier. But of course, there is always the challenge that it might not be as interactive as when you are in the classroom. So some people might feel intimidated to ask questions in Zoom in front of everybody. I think we have managed relatively well. Uh, I have a colleague here who is very good at um, creating an atmosphere which is very relaxed and friendly. So people actually do dare to ask questions. And some, someone also reported that they missed the lunch that we, we used to provide uh, on our premises. Now continuing to the graphical user interfaces. So here you see a screenshot of the Chipster software. Uh, this is from our course data. So we have been doing Visium data analysis with two samples, integrating them, um, annotating the spots with reference data. On the right, uh, you can see the analysis tools that are available. So in our course, we do pretty much the same things as, for example, Paolo does in his R and Python based course. We have got quite good feedback for this um, also from people who actually know R. So they feel that when they learn things using Chipster in this case, uh, they can concentrate more on the actual uh, analysis methods. So to understand what these different steps mean and what the different parameters mean and so forth. Now to finish with, I would like to acknowledge, uh, first of all, people in my team who have been providing training and developing Chipster. Then we have been collaborating with people at the Finnish Institute of Molecular Medicine and University of Helsinki. And, and I would like to acknowledge Paolo and Osa from Envis, Sweden, and Ahmed from the Leiden University Medical Center for our course collaboration. 
Finally, I would also like to say thanks to all our course participants and Chipster users who have really helped us to shape, shape the courses and software over the years. Thank you.